Many people are wondering what is the worst case scenario from a super flare. This is an important topic in the field of space physics. Many space scientists have been looking to quantify the cosmic ray induced effects in the atmosphere and the corresponding space weather effects. Space weather effects, specifically the exposure to radiation, represent an important threat, but there are many others. And over the last few years, scientists have learned a lot about these major superflare events, or solar energetic particle events, SEPs. Now, we've been studying the sun with satellites for decades now. And we still don't know mechanisms for things like solar flares and coronal mass ejections, but we have some ideas. There are lots of peer-reviewed studies on the human health associated with geomagnetic storms. And there is, in fact, a chart that has been set up that we've been sharing now for almost a decade on the geomagnetic score in human health. There are geomagnetic storm risks, which means when the KP gets up above 7. There are cosmic ray risks when the KP sits at 0. There are also solar flare risks when large flares immediately send radio blackouts to Earth and potentially electron or proton storms. Now, based on some of the most cutting-edge science, including the use of dendrochronology, which is tree rings, and the ice cores, scientists have been able to uncover several large events in recent history. And so far, three events have been detected unambiguously in beryllium-10, chlorine-36, and carbon-14 records. The most recent event is 990. 3994, just over a thousand years ago. And then one of the biggest events, the Charlemagne event, and one of the most well known is 774 775. Both of these are AD. There is another large event at 660 BC. And then an extreme event 9,125 years ago or about 7100 BC. So what we know in the last 9,000 years is there's been four major super flares, three of them happening just in the last 3,000 years. So these events are much more common than once thought. Now let's take a look at some of the papers on the risk assessments associated with these events. Now, what's very unfortunate and telling is that many of the papers that are coming out on extreme space weather and the impacts on engineered systems and infrastructure, like this one by the Royal Academy of Engineering, they all use the Carrington event as a measure of a large solar flare event or geomagnetic storm. But the Carrington event of 1859 pales in comparison to any of the four events I just told you about. In fact, the four events we just discussed may have been 100 to 1,000 times stronger than the Carrington event, which is used as a bar to measure extreme geomagnetic activity. And clearly, based on what we just told you, is not a bar at all. So nothing in these assessment reports, if they're using the Carrington event as a bar, really means anything. Because we're talking about events that are 100 to 1,000 times stronger than the Carrington event happening about every 1,000 years. Now, one of the main concerns are geomagnetically induced currents. Rapid high amplitude magnetic variations during magnetic storms induce a geoelectric field in the conducting earth. 
and in conductors at the Earth's surface. So that's very bad news because we've got lots of things on the Earth's surface that conduct electricity, and that can lead to explosions and fires and blackouts. It says that the probability of the occurrence of these intense localized disturbances is largely determined by the frequency of severe geomagnetic storms, as such storms can produce multiple bursts of large energy. Electrical transmission and pipeline ne networks might also be at risk. The consequences of severe, severe space weather for the power transmission system include tripping of safety systems, potentially leading to regional outages, or even cascade failure of the grid. Transmission system voltage instability and voltage sag as well. It could also cause premature aging of transformers, leading to decreased capacity in months and years following the event. Rail networks will be affected. Railway infrastructure and operation can be affected by induced electrical currents during severe space weather. Studies of railway operations at magnetic latitudes above 50 degrees have shown that induced or stray currents from the ground during strong geomagnetic storms result in the increased number of signaling anomalies. And then we've got, well, derailments and toxic plumes of chemicals. We have the ionospheric impact on radio systems, and anyone that uses a ham radio is well aware of these impacts. And that can lead to radio blackout and communication issues. And that is the, in the initial blast, if that's followed by a geomagnetic storm that takes out the grid, there could be a prolonged period of zero communication on Earth. And that leads us to the impacts on satellite communications. An event that's 100 times larger than the Carrington event should fry almost all satellites in low Earth orbit, and they will fail and eventually re-enter in a cascading nightmare that could last for decades, if not centuries. The impact on global navigation systems. A large enough event will knock out GPS and everyone will be lost. Do you know how many planes are flying at a given time at any moment? There are, in fact, between eight and 9,000 commercial flights flying above the U.S. at any moment. And that doesn't include personal aircraft, private aircraft, and the military. So let's just say it's around 10,000. At any moment, planes that will lose GPS. And how many of those pilots can land blind? It will be a nightmare. HF radio communications will also be impacted. Propagation. Satellite operations. Well, if all the satellites are heated up internally and fry, we can clearly see that there will be impacts on satellite operations. And that's one of the key things they're talking about here, internal charging. And in this internal charging is closely monitored by NOAA, where we will link you below to their current space weather conditions and their C CERT spacecraft charging hazards map, which is shown every day and it has a moving average on the amount of internal charging, surface charging, total dose, and single event effects, as well as a map on where satellites may be greatly affected in those low Earth orbits. So we can already see on small geomagnetic storms that are happening now some of the internal charging effects. And we did see Elon Musk lose a whole bunch of spacecraft that he, uh, part of the Starlink satellite network that he launched during a geomagnetic storm. There's also considerations on atmospheric drag. Space launches, we just discussed that, and losing vehicles if you launch at the wrong time. We also have to worry about space weather and atmospheric radiation and the human effects. So there are lots of considerations. And most of you know what those are. Let's say we do have a Carrington event. It will be a matter of a day and a half before we know the effects on the grid. And let's say there is some grid failure and the banks fail, 
There'll be no way to get money. People will be panicking. The anxiety level will rise because, well, unfortunately, the human population is not prepared for what's coming. But you are because you watch our channel and many other that are probably preparing you for worst case scenarios. This isn't the podcast to talk about preparedness, but you need backup energy, food, and a plan. That is the minimum. And if we're talking about long-term effects, if the entire grid gets knocked out, if we're talking about an X-1000, we will be knocked back to the Stone Age. The majority of people on Earth will die, and everything will be anew. But there is a, a rising threat that is not a solar flare. In a recent paper reassessing the past million years of neo-impact cratering on Earth using high-resolution digital topography is quite scary. It shows that extinction-level asteroid impacts could be far more common than we thought. And if you've been watching our radio show, Cosmic Catastrophe on Revolution Radio, Lee and I have concluded this multiple times from multiple angles. So whether it's a space rock that suddenly shows itself, like the seven we've just recently discovered, and smashes into an ocean, or a solar flare that we can't predict either, one way or the other, something is coming to end the empire. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. The inevitable likelihood of a major geomagnetic storm happens during the equinoxes. If you watch the update on Oppenheimer, you know that. So that means spring and fall. And the major super flares we talked about, the Charlemagne event, the 660 BC event, and the 7125 BC event all occurred on what appears to be the solar minimum of a cycle. So we do have preparation. And we do have some skills to predict when they may occur. I hope you got something out of the video. It certainly was a boom to knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave your questions below. And be safe. We love you. Support us on Patreon and share this video because we are shadow banned. Be safe.